Okay, now if we were to take some of these uh, concepts that we've been talking about and try to actually apply them to writing a solo section, <coughs> I'd sort of demonstrate uh, what this process might look like in sort of its uh, um, developmental stages. Uh, I really don't like this red marker, so I'm going to change that up. Um, this is a, uh, a melody I wrote a few months ago that I was hoping to orchestrate out for uh, Big Band. And, uh, you know, as a sort of conceptualizing of it, I'll make sure I draw out sort of the entire energy or form. But I think I was hearing the saxes play sort of the initial melody and then moving to uh, a solo section. Of course, you know, as I think about uh, what would provide nice contrast, one thing is, you know, the texture I'm using. Another might be to actually just change up the melodic instruments. So I'm going to do a little bit of thinking about what instruments might be a, a good contrast from the saxophones playing the melody. Secondly, I'm going to take a look at the shape that I had originally drawn for this particular part of the song, which is basically just like a, a, a line moving up that I want the solo to feel energetic and sort of continue to build and build and build until we get to the next section. I could uh, divide this into smaller chunks and sort of think about the, uh, the length of it. Uh, I'm a big fan of writing material before and after uh, repeat signs so that if a soloist wanted to take multiple choruses, they'll have that flexibility and that they're sort of built in connecting material from the previous melodic section to the new melodic section. <coughs> In this case, uh, I would probably sort of sketch all this out. Um, this particular song has an AAB form, where it's like uh, 16 bars, 16 bars, uh, 16 bars. Um, <coughs> and the 16 bars that I've highlighted outside of the uh, choruses would actually be probably material that's different from the original solo material. They would just provide a sort of transitionary uh, chords or harmony to take us to somewhere new. Again, as you're sort of conceptualizing the solo section, if you're able to have a uh, repeated choruses that would allow you to potentially add in an additional solo at some point in case if you wanted somebody else to solo in addition to um, whoever you had in mind it would give them the option of playing numerous choruses and just sort of cueing the backgrounds going out um, there's a lot of sort of benefits to that uh, uh, to using repeats and having that sort of flexibility um, as part of my process to help sort of develop a solo I would for sure include backgrounds that would probably happen the second time Again, with the, the idea that I wanted, you know, every bar to sort of continue to build in intensity um, throughout the entire section until we move on to whatever the next part of the song would be. Um, <coughs> again, as I sort of look at this sort of idea of connecting material that bridges uh, whatever the section is before this and after this to the solo section, uh, I would definitely encourage using variations of um, different melodic material. I originally wrote ending material and I think I wanted to be a little bit more clear. When I was thinking ending material I was thinking whatever the last like two chords of the melody are or whatever happens at the very end of the melody not at the end of the actual piece. All right, But I think there's a lot of uh, sort of interesting ideas that you could explore or sort of expand out. In this case this is like a 3-4 song that uh, has uh, goes back and forth between two minor chords at the very end. So I think there's lots of uh, sort of variations you could do to sort of move that around. You can go into a different key or somewhere else. As I sort of step back and look at this, I realize that uh, I think the best uh, source of contrast for me would maybe be to have a rhythm section solo that would uh, um, sort of provide a nice little reset from the saxophone melody. It could be piano or guitar. <coughs> and then of course that would sort of impact everything. That would impact how I decide to write backgrounds, uh, um, and what instruments might uh, be supportive. And then again, so now that I'm thinking, oh, I want this to be piano or guitar, maybe I want to have that flexibility built into the band so the band could choose whether it's piano or guitar, then maybe I'm not going to necessarily make that decision, but I know I want one of those instruments uh, sort of happening. As I sort of think about, again, the shape of uh, that everything is sort of getting more and more uh, exciting or energetic as it's going, um, I think maybe the best idea is in the repeated section when I have the open choruses, or the two courses, maybe I'll have uh, more pads or longer notes, and that uh, <coughs> then those are going to sort of work them w their way to ensemble hits, so that the hits are sort of like the most uh, uh, energetic part of the solo, and then maybe I'll have those hits blend into whatever happens at the beginning of the next course. Hopefully that provides a little bit of uh, good insight into sort of the beginning parts of sort of developing um, how we would go about writing a solo section. In the next series of videos, I'll actually go into finale and actually um, sketch all this out so you can actually see what this looks like musically.